Hello, um, I'm Denise Burkover, the Collections Curator at the Image Center, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us for Canada Now, Artists in Conversation. This conversation series is organized in conjunction with the Canada Now Photography Acquisition Initiative and its related exhibition, which is on view at the Image Center from September 14 through December 3rd, 2022. The exhibition features the photographic work of 10 emerging or mid-career Canadian artists from across the country, all acquired through the support of funds provided by photographer Edward Bertinsky and Nicholas Metivier Gallery. And today I'm very happy to be joined now by two of these artists in the exhibition and, and um, acquisition, Morris Lum and Kabuziak. Um, so thank you both for being here with us. Um, I thought by way of beginning, I would just ask if each of you could uh, briefly introduce yourselves as well as the body of work that we um, see featured in Canada now. So, um, Morris, if you don't mind, could we start with you? Um, sure. Uh, hi, my name is Morris Lum. I'm based in uh, Toronto, Toronto. Um, the work that's featured in the, this series is called Tongan Guy. It um, documents Chinatowns across Canada, but also in the United States. Um, and I've been working on this project for the last 10 years, uh, documenting Chinatowns in various major cities, looking at their histories, speaking with um, you know, elders about their histories within each of the Chinatowns and sort of build, building a vocabulary around thinking about how Chinatowns exist um, over the last hundred years. Yeah. Thank you, Morris. Um, Kabusiak? Kana uvanga Kabusiak. Apang ma atinga Arlen Carpenter ekahopmun, ama manga atinga Holly Nasigalawai Carpenter tuktu yakdumun. Uh, hi, my name is Kablusiak. Uh, my father is Arlen Carpenter. He's from Sax Harbor, and my mom is Holly Nasigalawai Carpenter, and she's from Tuktoyaktuk. Um, I'm currently based in Calgary or Mulkinstis, and um, the works that are involved in the exhibition are from my um, Inuvik Ghost series, I believe. Okay, um, thank you both for the introductions um, and for contributing these uh, important works to the exhibition. Um, the reason that you've been paired together in this conversation today um, is because of the shared theme of the diaspora and how identity can be um, particularly tied to a place. And so as a way to sort of um, dive into your works a little bit um, deeper, perhaps um, I could ask each of you to speak to how those concepts um, are present within your own work, um, but also how you might observe um, those same concepts resonating in the other's work. Um, so uh, Kablusiak, could we start with you this time? Sure. Um, I use the, uh, the image of the ghost as a sort of way to uh, talk about diaspora and that a liminal space of being like uh, an urban Inuk versus like, you know, regular Inuk. I don't know. That sounds dumb. But like uh, existing in a home territory that I didn't grow up in. And that that's sort of what that uh, photo series is exploring. And just as a follow up to that, um, uh, what would you say about how those themes um, in your work that you discussed um, might uh, also be present in, in what you observe in Morris's work? Um, yeah, I think the idea of diaspora is really, um, it's open and it doesn't, uh, doesn't necessarily have uh, borders and boundaries. So I, I, um, I like that it, it is an open, open-ended, uh, platform for artists like Morris and I to talk about our, our really different uh, perspectives. Yes, thank you. Yes, um, very, very different um, perspectives on, on that theme. Um, so I'd love to hear um, Morris's thoughts on that. <clears throat> yeah, maybe I can answer about like the connection part of it. And I, I thought, you know, the way that Kaluziak uses the ghost as a way of talking about um, diaspora or sort of like entering a space. 
is sort of reflective in the way that in my images, I don't have anybody in those spaces. And for me, when I was, you know, starting to build a vocabulary around the project and how to sort of um, proceed in terms of producing my own work, um, not having people in those images was a conscious choice just because I wanted to have, um, I guess, audience members sort of enter that space without having to focus on somebody. So you know, having them feel that they're entering that space, what would it sort of feel like being within that space? Um, <clears throat> and just sort of tying that back to diaspora, like for me, many of the spaces um, that I photographed, you know, I've, I didn't know anything about them at the time. And, you know, when you enter them, they're really kind of, um, kind of like time capsules of, of, of Chinese diaspora that, you know, most people don't really get to see. Uh, I'm speaking more specifically about the interior images within the series of John and Guy. And um, so for me, sort of being given the access to these spaces and photographing them, wanting, I guess, the audience member to be able to, to feel what that's like, sort of being within these spaces. And like a lot of the spaces are that I photograph the interiors of are you know, very, very spiritual. There's a lot of rituals with that. So, so being part of that experience, I think is important um, for me and for the audience member to sort of get a, a grasp of. Yeah, definitely. Um, that was interesting what you were saying about how your images are absent of the human presence, whereas um, Kablusiak, in your, in your works, the, the, the presence of yourself as, you know, the performer, as, you know, the this stand and go figure is obviously very, um, very much the point of the work um, or the center of the work. Um, I also think it's interesting that you both um, focus on vernacular spaces. Um, I'm thinking, you know, obviously um, your image Northmart, Kablusiak and um, Morris, your many, many storefronts and restaurant fronts and um, how that kind of banal image is is populated or not and what it symbolizes or doesn't. Um, I, I'm wondering if, if you um, recognize any other parallels between your bodies of work or your practice that either of you um, could speak to. I mean, I guess the sense of place or the importance of that. Um, and sort of referencing that in the work, um, again, through the, in my, in my case, like through the non-figure, but in, in Kubuza's case, um, the ghost, and sort of being present in that space, I think is really important as the audience member, um, sort of being there, I think is really um, empowering. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the importance of place, I guess, you know, for you, Morris, you're photographing the idea of Chinatown across these many different spaces and locations, some of which you may have ties to and some that you may not. Um, whereas, you know, Kablusiak in this particular series, it's very much tied to your, your ancestry and your, you know, your family history. Um, so I think that's also kind of an interesting um, parallel, but also a difference there in, in your just sort of choice of place centering the bodies of work around particular places. Um, so I, I would love to also open uh, the floor um, for any questions that you may have for the other um, on any topic. Um, uh, Kablusiak, would you, would you care to go first? Um, sure, yeah. Um, I feel like this question is really sort of general and um, but I was wondering, uh, Morris, who do you imagine your audience is when you're making your works? Yeah, I mean, I think <clears throat> um, like early on when I was starting to produce the work, um, I'm trying to do the research for the work. I was, I was actually finding it really difficult to find um, specific stories about um, Chinese Canadian heritage, um, particularly um in the art sense um so i think for me what i wanted to do with the work is actually to be to start to add to that sort of visual language of the history of, of the chinese in canada and in the us um 
So I think, you know, in terms of like who I think my audience is, it's really about um, thinking about sort of the, the first Chinese that came, but also the immigrant Chinese community that keeps on coming in and sort of sharing that knowledge of history as well. Um, and that understanding um, through the work or, sort of, or starting to build a dialogue around, you know, the, the history of, of the Chinese in Canada and America. And do you have a question as well, Morris? Yeah, definitely. Um, so Kaluziak, something that I'm curious about in your work is your approach to performance and photography. And I'm wondering how you kind of make, uh, make decisions around um, performance and photography. And, you know, for instance, like when do you press the shutter? Like when do you determine these sort of factors? Um, I think, so I, I have like um, three photo series that um, are sort of like this performative photography type thing. Uh, the first iteration was like the ghost series in Calgary. Uh, and then the, the second iteration is um, the ghost in Uvic. And the third is, um, in my mind, it's connected, but uh, looks different. But uh, the third one is like, um, like a photo series of myself wearing lingerie out in the prairies. But these, um, yeah, the, the sort of performative aspect of it it's um I think it's a lot more uh controlled uh in a sense um the photos themselves um all three iterations were taken by uh dear friends and uh, other artists the first series um, I had help from Ryan Denny Owen uh the second I had help from Nicholas Brown and the third uh, I had help from Nicole Kelly Westman. And so there's a, a big part of that, these photos is um, letting go of control. And I'm like a like control freak sometimes. So having uh, somebody else uh, be involved, I think is another act of like trust and sort of letting go and um, yeah, helping having their help in deciding like when, uh, when the photo is taken. And um, yeah, I think that's a really long-winded way of answering your question. Thank you both. Um, I have a, a question for each of you as well, just because these series um, that we've been discussing um, are ongoing or existed in multiple iterations. So I was wondering, um, you know, Kusiak, you, you use this trope of the ghost in several series. I was wondering, is that something that you plan to return to in, in future series um, in other places or contexts? Um, there's no like concrete ghost plans, um, but I feel like, <laughs> that, I feel like it's a really good uh, you know, thing to keep in my back pocket of like, this imagery seems to work for both me and like audiences, so. Yeah, that's good to know. And then Morris, obviously your, your project is, is ongoing um, and you visited many, many different Chinatowns. Um, I was wondering, are there cities with important Chinatown centers that you have not visited that you're planning to go to, or do you plan to return to sites you've been to before, see how they've changed, especially when we think about urbanization or gentrification and just how these, these places are changing so quickly in some, some cases? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the answer to that is a bit of both, actually. Like, I'm, I do wanna to go to a few um, Chinatowns that I haven't been to as of yet. Um, and I'm also interested in revisiting um, many of Chinatowns that I've been to, um, especially post pandemic. Um, you know, thinking about, um, you know, what are the after effects of the fact that there was a shutdown, um, discrimination against the Asian community, like what happens, you know, post pandemic when cities are starting to come alive again? Um, what happens when, 
you know, businesses are closed for two years, like are they shutting down? Um, and how does, it, how does that affect um, each of those uh, cities, I think, is, is important to reflect on. Yeah, that's a, a great point, how the, the pandemic plays into your series in particular. So many shutdowns, especially of restaurants and small family-run businesses, you know, all over the world, but, you know, um, very noticeable here in Canada and, and here in Toronto, where, you know, we're both situated, we can see that kind of on a daily basis, um, how these places are changing. Um, okay, well, I... I also wanted to return to something that that you um, alluded to, uh, Kaluziak, and, and in your question, Morris, about um, this, uh, the way um, that Kaluziak incorporates uh, uh, self-performance into, into the work. Um, uh, this was the topic of uh, the previous uh, installment of this conversation series with uh, Seamus Gallagher and uh, Rebecca Bear um, that we uh, just, uh, just recorded. Um, and uh, they both spoke about that aspect of their works, um, utilizing the, the self in as a as a kind of a representation of other things in this performative way. And so I think that really connects your work, uh, Kalusiak, to other works in Canada now acquisition as well. We also you know see self portraiture in the work of J.J. Levine and in Kaylee Spitzer, um, who are other of your um, fellow uh, artists present in this project. Um, so I guess I just wanted, by way of kind of closing our discussion, return to the to the Canal project and to just ask you both, um, what are your thoughts about um, Canada Now as an entity, um, you know, the name of this project and, and what does it mean for you personally to present your work within this context? Um, so I know that's a bit of a loaded question to end with, but um, so would either of you let care to go first? I'm gonna pick on more then. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe it just sort of um, falls back to one of my earlier responses and the fact that when I was doing research on Chinese Canadian history, there was the lack thereof. So the fact that um, the work now is being presented in an exhibition called Canada Now is reflective of the fact that there are many diverse stories that need to be told and need to be shared um, throughout the country. And I think it's important um, to give that space to these voices. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, Kabusiak? Um... Yeah, I, I wouldn't call myself Canadian. Uh, in Evaluate existed long before Canada did. So I would, I, I don't align myself with Canada or Canadian values. And I think it's just like a funny sort of identity thing. Um, but yeah, I'm in Evaluate. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's interesting to think of like the, the exhibition title as being in the present and um, the artists involved and how, like the, I don't know. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say, it's cool is not just a bunch of white folks being in Canada now being like, this is what Canada looks like. And it's nice to see, uh, you know, the diversity of uh, what is now known as Canada. Thank you. And yeah, totally fair about, you know, your personal, alignments um, with, with the, the name um, or not. And um, and yeah, I, uh, both of your comments on um, the diversity aspect, which you know was one of the, the core goals of this project in terms of the artists represented and um, letting their voices, you know, or all of your voices um, come forward in the project and speak the, the particular um, things that you, you said to speak, represent. Um, so um, I think that uh, brings us to the end of our time. And I just want to thank you both um, for being here and for sharing about your work and for engaging in this dialogue with us. Thank you so much. Thank you.